road rage turned into a classroom rage. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. All um, right, you guys. Hey, I want to introduce you. This is my good friend, Sydney Reeves, a.k.a. Dr. Fit. I see Dr. Fit Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My husband and I, we go to his fitness studio, and he tries to keep me from not having to take a nap every stinking day. Before I started working out with Sydney, my routine was teach school, go home because I was so dead tired, take an hour nap, wake up, fix food for my family, and then go back to bed. I had like zero energy, and so I was like, something's got to change. So I started exercising with Sydney, and boom, now I can, you know, pretty much. Yeah, my energy level has Top so notch pickleball player. Oh yeah, and it's helping with pickleball too. That's my passion, pickleball. And my husband's my husband's getting buff, not as buff as Sid, but my husband's uh, maintaining, okay, maintaining um, his physique, and uh, he has a ton more energy also. So Sid and I went to high school together. Even though one of my students one day said Sid came and talked to my class one year, and I and I he we hugged goodbye. And one of my students was like, oh, Mrs. Radel, is that your son? It's like, oh, well, number one, it's the wrong color. Number two, <laughs> number two, he's my same age. So that was like a big slap in my face. Like, okay, I look super old, and he looks 20 years younger than I. So that's the benefit of exercise. So Sid and I went to high school together. We went to Ben Lomond High School, graduated class of 86. So, yeah, when he says he's 54, Radel's 54, too. So now you know how old I am. <laughs> so let's thank him. He he's Are you he's gonna, right now? Yes. Okay. He's gonna tell you his amazing story and talk about a little bit of health, but thank holy you. cow. So thank, thank you. you for driving oh. all the way. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Um very happy oh man, excited to uh, share this information with you today. Um, I thought I would start today as I was driving in and kind of got some inspiration with this one question, because this is health class, right? Yes. Okay, so why, why is your health important to you? By a raise of hands, why? Can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand? Thank you. So why? you can look like that when you're 50? Right, so you can look like this when you're 50. Okay, that's one reason. Why else? Yeah, heart problems. So what happens if you get heart problems in what? How's your life change? You can die. die. You can die. You can go to the hospital a lot. You could have a lot of medical bills. You could put a lot of stress on your family. Blah, blah, blah. You see how that scenario plays out? Okay. Over here. Perform better with, with sports. Yes. Uh, your health. Why is your important health? Uh, so your health is important. Yeah, so you can uh, be a better athlete. Yep, that's true. Um, what else? What else? Why? Why? You got, yeah, you got another one? Okay. Number yeah. two. Go. So, because it, like, doesn't it make you, like, happier? Yes. Can, yes. Can yes. Yes. If, good? yes. Okay. What'd you say? Mental health? Yeah. Okay. So, if we talked about the different components of health, we've got mental health, physical health, emotional health, social health. I'm forgetting one. Oh, you know, spiritual health, right? Okay. So, um, as I was driving, I was thinking about, first ask myself, why is your health important to you? And I would answer that by saying, so that you can um, function every day and be happy. Uh, because when you don't have your health, life becomes difficult and miserable and unhappy, right? Um, I just went to Shields to buy a fish finder and the guy that was uh, selling the uh, item to me said hey I'm sorry I was going to meet with you but I um, had some health problems I have an autoimmune disease which caused me to miss work and I thought oh, I'm sorry to hear that man so you see it every day all day with, and no matter who you're talking to health is a factor with uh, all the people you know right your family your siblings, your, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, unc aunts and uncles, your teacher. And with COVID, we all went through that. We know that really kind of drove the point home of how important health is, right? So now I'm going to tell you a story about why or how my the value of my health um, increased like 
significantly over my life since I was your age, okay? Um, so yeah, um, like she said, we went to high school together. Uh, let's go back in time. Ben Loma, my junior year. Um, we had AP History, AP English, AP Biology, okay? Bunch of brainiacs, her included. 3.99 GPA, okay? Don't let her fool you. <laughs> she was like top of our class. And we had a majorly competitive class, academically and athletically. You have Larry Kane, he's six foot nine, doctor, St. George, played center at University of Utah basketball team. Daniel Miller, Taysom, cheerleader, Ben Loman, went to medical school with me, became a captain in the Navy. Okay, paid for all her loans. I mean, everything was free, right? Navy paid for all her um, education. She's a pediatrician in San Diego. Crazy. Pearl Wu went to Northwestern Medical School. In three years, she completed all her medical school. Three years. Accelerated medical school. Matt Gardner, psychiatrist from our class. I mean, we had, right, some major league. Um, so, I'm trying to keep up, right? Um, and I'm playing uh, football, uh, wrestling, and track. And uh, I'm adopted, so I grew up kind of an only child. My adopted parents, uh, my adopted mother, couldn't have kids um, due to diabetes. So right from my junior year, I started realizing um, how important you know, your health was just by watching my mom struggle with diabetes. How many of you know someone with diabetes? Right, see? That's almost half the class. It's a horrible disease. Um, it attacks the body in different ways. You can have cataracts, you can have kidney problems. I've seen people get kidney transplants. Um, in the case of my mom, uh, she had diabetic neuropathy and ended up losing both of her legs to amputation. Okay, So she's in a wheelchair with no legs. I'm coming home from school, um, checking her blood sugars. Uh, I'm taking the Pepsi away from her. Mom, why are you drinking this? You know, this is, throws up the blood sugars. It's when I first became, uh, well, I started hating soda was at that moment. Anyway, um, then I have to give her an insulin shot and then start doing my homework, right? And this is kind of what my life was like. And I said, Mom, you know, I'm going to become a doctor and help people with diabetes and other diseases. So that's kind of when I made the commitment, the decision to go towards medical school, okay? So we graduate <clears throat> um, now at University of Utah with Danielle, the cheerleader from Ben Loman, and my best friend Larry, who signed a four-year scholarship um, in basketball. And we stuck to our routine, okay? Back to the routine. We're lifting weights, we're doing our squats in the varsity weight room. We're drinking these horrible protein shakes to try and put on weight. Larry was tall and skinny, you know, and um, coaches said, you have to put on weight. I was trying to put on weight, become bigger, faster, stronger, to try out for the football team, uh, free safety. Living in the dorms with football players, you know, Scott Mitchell, he's, uh, he went to the Lions, lefty, six foot six quarterback. Anyway, um, we had a lot of cool guys down there at University of Utah at that time. Um, had a great freshman year. Uh, played some rugby for Highland. Um, got into martial arts. I had the mindset of, I need to be more flexible, because if I'm more flexible, I'm probably gonna be faster. I knew that at that age, so I took martial arts to work on flexibility and discipline. Uh, joined a fraternity, Sigma Chi, uh, which was a lot of fun. We played so much flag football in Rice Eccles Stadium and uh, just had a blast. Made a decision that I was going to move into the Sigma Chi house my sophomore year. Okay, So I uh, came home for the summer and I met a young lady named Marcella. Okay? Marcella was from uh, Littleton, Colorado. She went to Heritage High School. And uh, turns out she had a very difficult senior year. Um, her stepfather was very abusive, okay? So she slept in her car her senior year. It was horrible. And um, she called her dad, who lived in North Ogden, okay? He uh, was, was an engineer and uh, said, hey, sweetheart, you know, come out here, live with me, go to Weber State and you can pursue volleyball and basketball. Turns out we were both 5'11". I'm 5'9 now. I'll tell you why it sucks. But anyway, I used to be 5'11". Look at that, that's 5'11 right there. See that? So, 
Um, we're both 5'11", both aspiring athletes, and we're having fun, and we were doing what? Sticking to the routine. We were working out. Hey, we got to do squats. Hey, we got to run. You know, we got to do some bleachers. Let's, let's do some hills. Um, and we went out dancing, had fun, dated. Um, it all came to uh, came down to the final day of the summer. Like uh, I was packing my car, getting it ready for moving the Sigma Chi house. She called me up and said, "Hey, uh, stop by before you leave and say goodbye." So uh, that's what I did. I went over to her place, and we were outside on the lawn, and we we're stretching and uh, drinking some Kool-Aid. She loved her Kool-Aid. And she read a poem to me, and um, I said, hey, let's go for a jog, just a quick little jog, you know, talk a little bit. And so that's what we did. You guys know where 2550 is, you know, the uh, North Shore Aquatic Center, mm -hmm. Majestic Elementary, okay, you with me? So we headed west um, down that road to the 89 there, and then we turned around and we were on our way back, you know, probably like um, three blocks from back to her dad's place, and we got hit by a, a drunk driver. Um, it was out of nowhere, didn't see it coming, giant car, Lincoln Continental doing 60. Uh, Marcella was hit first from behind, and she went through the uh, windshield of the car. Um, and so, yeah, she didn't make it. She didn't make it, and um, that's part of the reason I'm here today uh, first of all, I was lucky to be alive. Uh, second of all, I, I just was sad, you know, that she didn't make it. So um, when the time came, I it took a lot of time, but I decided to speak to students to give her life more meaning and try to prevent it from happening to someone else. Okay. That's pretty much the primary reason I'm here. Um, my legs were shattered uh, below the knee. Well, compound fractures of my tibia and my fibula in both legs. Um, the driver pulled over for a second, and he was just sitting there. I could see his uh, brake lights. And at that same moment, a student from Weaver High School turned on to 2550 North. Billy Ross, he was like a sophomore. He had just dropped his friend off from, from they worked together. And as he pulled onto the road, I think it startled the driver like, is that a cop or something? I gotta get out of here. So he flipped around and did a U-turn and came back towards us doing 120. Okay, I put my head down and I thought it was, that was it, it was, I was done. So he ran Billy off the road, and then he ran the next lady off the road. She was 19, Rochelle Johnson from North Ogden. He took off. There was, he had a passenger in the car. The passenger is more intoxicated than he was. He had glass all over his face from the windshield, and they just sped off. Um, when Billy came back, you know, around under the road and, and saw us lying there, he went into shock because it was horrible what he saw. So he, as he parked his truck, Rochelle Johnson came down the road. She was totally freaked out and was wondering what was going on. She saw Billy and they kind of made eye contact as she drove by. And she went to the 7-Eleven here and uh, got a cop and they came, came back. And that's when the cop did his exam on us with the flashlight. Apparently, they shine the light in your eyes. Well, neither of us were, were responsive. They thought we were both dead. So they were standing there talking, and I just started screaming and moving. And so that's when Rochelle Johnson took my hand, and she said, it's going to be OK. The driver went home and hid his car in the garage, and his wife woke up, and she started arguing with him. 
where you been? What you, you been drinking? And um, he said, no, don't worry about it. The usual fight, you know, he went drinking every day after work to three or four bars, and then he would come home. He was arrested a week before he hit us for DUI. They let him go. So she dialed 911, and the cops came to their house and arrested him. And he went off to jail, and I went off to surgery. Because I drove from Springville today, I don't have my um, bone stretchers to show you, or my pins that they put in my leg. I usually pass those around, but they took uh, two pins uh, called tibial nails, and they put it in your leg, and they kind of pieced the bone from the scene of the accident to kind of get your healing process started, and they did that in both legs. So when I woke up in the hospital after the first surgery, you know, I was pretty busted up, and um, Dr. Croslin uh, was taking care of me. And uh, it was a really harsh reality, harsh, because my excitement for going back to college turned into like a nightmare. And uh, I kept saying, where's Marcella? Is Marcella OK? And they never, I said she's at a different hospital. But like I could see it on their face that they were lying, you know. So I started to uh, kind of uh, freak out, and I was in denial. And I told the nurse to take me to the weight room. And she's like, uh, I don't think you understand how badly you're hurt. You need to just calm down and relax. So uh, I was in a wheelchair for a while. And I remember having multiple surgeries uh, in the beginning. I ended up having 25 surgeries in this journey that I'm going to describe for you today. But my friends came from Salt Lake. They were all bummed out and in shock. You know, um, sorry to hear about this. The rugby team came. They ended up going to Australia and they won the national championship. I was laying in the hospital. My girlfriend's dead. Um, yeah, it was a hard time. My mom's stressing out because I'm in a wheelchair. She's in a wheelchair, you know. And, and um, I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and enroll in Weber State and start taking classes from a wheelchair. So that's what I did. Started taking classes and trying to piece together um, some new goals. Um, the drunk driver eventually had his trial. How much time do you think he was sentenced to? Take a guess. Raise of hands. Anyone want to guess? Yeah. Five years? Five what? Five to ten years. Five to ten years. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, seven months. Seven months. Anyone else? Yeah. Now he killed someone. Oh. Yeah. What? Never. Oh. How much time do you think? I was going to say 18 months. Oh. Okay. Yeah. He served a year in with work release, which means that he went to work every day and slept at the jail at night. How do you think Marcella's family felt about that sentencing? If someone killed your sister and they got a year, how would you feel about the judicial system? Well, um, as I started to observe all this happening, um, my, 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 my mental journey, my health, my uh, the way I was processing everything kind of uh, changed over time, changed over time. Um, I was having a lot of surgeries and I was just trying to really focus on that. So there was another doctor involved named Dr. Ralston, Stephen Ralston. He uh, actually had an idea to move my soleus muscle. Do you know what the soleus muscle is? It's underneath your calf. They took my soleus muscle and they kind of wrapped it around on the top of my right leg to um, bring some more circulation to that area because it was struggling with this infection that I got. 
and um, it ended up dying. So I kind of lost my uh, soleus muscle. Um, it didn't. It didn't work out. Uh, Dr. Uh, Croslin, uh, he said, you know, Sydney, you're, you're probably going to have to go to the University of Utah to save this leg. And so I got down there with a guy named Dr. Scott. Dr. Scott became my friend, my hero, my doctor, um, just an amazing person. He was a, what's called a uh, orthopedic pediatric oncologist. What does that mean? He took cancer out of the bones of kids and then got them back walking again. Amazing, okay? So he said, we're going to do some bone stretching uh, first thing, Sydney. So they cut a big hole in my leg, and you'll see on the slides. Want to get the story of Sydney Reeves queued yes. up? Yeah, I pulled that That'll up. That'll be good. Yeah, story of Sydney Reeves. Um, you can search it up on YouTube if you want to watch it. But uh, so they did put this bone stretcher on my leg. It's called the Monticelli Spinelli External Fixation System. It's from like Europe, and it was made of alloy. It's pretty heavy. But I can tell you this, he said, now when this thing gets on your leg, I want you to stay active. So literally, I used to ride my mountain bike up Mile Hill by the baseball field with the bone stretcher on. Like, I didn't want it to slow me down. I was trying to maintain a range of motion in my ankle, my knee, okay? I swam with that thing on. I turned it with a wrench every day, just a small amount. And, um, it took like a year and a half to stretch the bone. And then they put a different bone stretcher on that was made out of titanium and smaller to compress the bone. So I had bone stretchers on for three years, okay? Um, I, the left tibia over here on this side, this, my, this leg, it actually slid from here down to here, okay? So that was kind of strong, actually. That was actually strong. So that's where I lost the two inches of height. This became my dominant leg, okay? And once I, this leg healed, I was able to get up on crutches, which was huge, right? So I went from a wheelchair to crutches. I'm at Weber State taking classes. And I had this idea after the sentencing, you know, um, hmm, I think I'm gonna write to Oprah Winfrey. Do you guys know who Oprah Winfrey is? Okay, so she's a talk show host. Uh, very famous, very wealthy woman, you know, billionaire. And um, I wrote her a letter. It, was, it felt like writing a letter to Santa Claus. Like, what are the odds that she's going to write back? What do you think the odds are? Very small, right? Well, the phone rang one day. I'll never forget. It was Oprah and Charlie Cook, her producer. And they were like, yeah, we're, we've, we have an interest in your story. We're doing a New Year's Eve special against drunk driving. We have several people on the show. Um, and we'd like you to come. Uh, one person that came was Heather Bledsoe of Alta High School. Took her dad's Porsche. Everyone got drunk, and she drove up Big Cottonwood Canyon and crashed. The car blew up, and everyone burned to death except Heather. She didn't have one scratch. How would she feel going to school the next time? knowing that she just killed a car full of people. All her, those people, those students' friends are looking at her. She's looking at them. She had nightmares, flashbacks of burning people, screaming. Wow, 